Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a test of the new Autopilot version 172676. I apologize for not posting an update in a while, but unfortunately I don't have any control over how frequently Tesla pushes updates to their cars, and I haven't actually received an update for my car since 171717. So it's been about a month and a half or so. Uh, which is why I haven't posted any new videos. So there have been a lot of intervening versions that have come out with the new logarithmic control. Um, unfortunately, this is the first one of those that I've actually gotten. So we're going to do the same test on the same section of road that I always do. So I'm currently setting my auto, my uh, traffic aware cruise control to 30 miles an hour, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on the autopilot. Now, one thing while we're doing this that I am going to say is I have actually done some testing with this before, and the new update does seem like it is significantly improved in a lot of ways. Um, there are also some things that it does now that some people might consider steps backwards, and we'll talk about that a little as we're going through. So we're approaching the turn 30 miles an hour. You'll notice that the car is much more aggressive about slowing down in anticipation of a turn. Uh, it's no longer understeering into the bike lane at all. In fact, if anything, it's actually oversteering a little bit there. It actually just went into the uh, suicide lane a little. In this side, it's probably going to come through just fine. Uh, but it's actually slowing down from 30 miles an hour to 20 miles an hour on this turn. And with the exception of that one little glitch, it has some trouble with that one particular turn. Uh, with the exception of that one little glitch, it actually did a perfectly good job. So now, <laughs> just got a thumbs up from a random guy on the street and passing in the Tesla. That's always a little gratifying. <laughs> um, so now I make my right turn, and then we're going to go through the same loop that we normally do. So I'm going to go ahead and engage the cruise control here. And as soon as it becomes available, turn on the autopilot. Um, most of the other observations that I've made about uh, previous versions, or the last version specifically, um, have not changed in this one. So it's still not reading street signs. Uh, so speed limit signs are pretty much ignored. It's basically just going off of the GPS data, just like previous versions. Um, it still is not reading cars in adjacent lanes in most circumstances. It also um, is, for whatever reason, not actually restricting you to only five miles per hour over the speed limit on local roads, depending on which local road it is. Um, that's something I observed in the last version. However, it's doing a great job of stuff like this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and disengage so I can make a right turn here. So yeah, on this particular boulevard, I can crank up the cruise, the um, autopilot to pretty much whatever speed I want, up to 90 miles an hour treats it just like a highway, even though I know it does not regard it as a highway, because it doesn't read the, the adjacent lane lines, and it doesn't allow me to do um, automated lane change. So there's definitely a distinction in the car's mind from GPS data between this road and an actual proper highway, but it treats it like a highway. Red light. <laughs> but it treats it like a highway in terms of the speed capping, which is interesting. Hmm. So we'll just wait here. This is a pretty sh this is a pretty quick light, so we won't have long to wait. Now, a couple of things I've noticed that are different in this particular version. Um, the I don't know if you can quite you can't quite see this in the video, and I'm not going to adjust the camera because it took me forever to get it positioned just the way that it is. Um, but the lane lines themselves that show up on the instrument cluster, um, they show up as narrower. It seems to be reading the lane as tighter than it did in the previous version. Uh, it's also doing a much better job of centering itself in a lane. So when you enter a lane that is a little bit wider than the car, um, especially when a lane widens after you've already been in it, in the previous version, 17, 17, 17, one of the things that I observed is the car would, it would try to hug one of those lane lines, basically, like it needed that safety net. Um, and sometimes if the lane were particularly wide, the car would actually bounce back and forth between the lane lines, which was not an ideal circumstance because it gives the appearance that you were swerving and, you know, probably get you pulled over for drunk driving. Um, and in this one, what it does instead is it basically centers itself in the lane. In the event that the lane widens, the car will actually just recenter itself based on what the new center of the lane is. So that's great. I mean, that's exactly the sort of thing that you'd want to see from a self-driving car. Uh, as far as lane changes, although we're not on the highway, so I can't demonstrate this, um, the lane changes are much more assertive. Um, the car practically almost darts into the next lane. I have noticed that the lane detection does seem to be 
not quite as good as the previous version. I don't know if it's become more discerning, um, but in some circumstances on the highway, I've seen it not detect that there is an adjacent lane that I can automatically change into. Um, whereas in the previous version, like it didn't seem to have any problems with those sections. That one's a little bit harder to quantify, obviously, because it could be any number of different circumstances between tests, the amount of light level in the day, uh, maybe the windshield's dirty. I'll, I'll have to do some more testing with that one and see how that goes. So right now we've got the auto steer engaged. It's driving itself at 44 miles an hour. Um, just pumped up to 45, which is what I have it set towards. It occasionally will start to drift off if it sees a lane line disappear for a turn lane, but it is pretty good about not actually drifting off into those lanes. Every once in a while, I'll see that still happen. I'll have to take control to make whoopsie. Little G-force there. <laughs> Sorry, I have this thing calibrated for my tablet. The um, idea of using this particular arm actually for uh, mounting the camera was an idea for my five-year-old son when I was describing to him the problem because he was asking a bunch of questions. So now, I've re-engaged the autopilot, we're going 45 miles an hour, we're going to go back across the same turn, going in the opposite direction. And this thing starts to think about going down that lane line, and then it immediately pops back. And it's doing a much better job. I mean, the, the the stuff they said about the longitudinal control definitely seems to be in effect. The only complaint that I would say I have about this version is when it comes to turns, let's see how it deals with these lines. Um, completely hands off. This is all the autopilot. All right, so it's doing a good job of centering in this lane. It in correctly interpreted the uh, road lines. Let's see what happens when we come up on this railway crossing. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh-uh, uh-uh. Oh, okay, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> All right, that was a little bit of a confusing section because the lane lines essentially disappear, the road widens off. I'm guessing it probably would have corrected back, but there's a chance I might have hit some grass there, so I went ahead and took over. We'll make a left turn here. It is nice not having to hold the camera while I'm doing this. Make another little adjustment so you guys can get a better angle. <clears throat> Hopefully this light won't take too terribly long. But as I was saying, yeah. So what they said about the, um, the longitudinal control definitely seems to be significantly improved. Uh, the car steers far more assertively. It is far less prone to understeering in turns. Um, in fact, if anything, the biggest complaint that I have is I think it slows down too aggressively on um, some turns, and that could be a result of the car is not reading the lane lines too far in advance. So it might be, even though technically the optical cameras are capable of seeing out pretty far, it's entirely possible that the car is only seeing the lane lines from somewhat of a, a closer perspective, so it doesn't necessarily have as much time to react or plan its, its path the way a human driver might. So when I approach the turn that we're gonna come back up to, even though it's a 25 mile an hour um, speed limit through there, and the turn is not like super sharp. It's, it's something that most drivers would feel comfortable taking at 25 or even 30 miles an hour. Come on, guy, wake up. Um, we do have, we will see the car when the autopilot is engaged, drop down to less than 20 miles an hour. And this is safe, but I see this as potentially being a problem for people who want to use autopilot because I think this might make other drivers behind you a little bit impatient because basically the car starts driving a little bit like an old granny. Um, now that said, you know, it is doing something safe. It is actually staying within the lane and is doing a much better job of that. I don't think it's accomplishing that in the best possible way. I think there's a balance to be achieved there. And I think at this point, the car has sort of overcorrected um, towards the safe side. And I think before, you know, autopilot really starts to, to come into its own on the hardware two cars, um, that's something that they're gonna have to make an adjustment for, maybe correct back in the other direction. Left. Right, and turning on the autopilot at 30 miles an hour and going back into the same turn that we came into before 
went back the opposite direction. So it's dropping to 22 miles, 20 miles an hour, 19 miles an hour from 30. But it's staying in that lane. Yeah, for some reason, right on that spot, it overcorrects into the suicide lane. And I haven't seen it do that anywhere else. It just has trouble with this particular intersection. So I don't want that section to, to give you a bad impression of how well this autopilot does on local roads. Generally speaking, it actually does a very good job. Um, for some reason, it just has trouble with that one particular turn in both directions. But uh, for the most part, yeah, it does an excellent job. And to sort of demonstrate that a little bit more, um, we'll keep going in this direction. That's the guy who gave us the thumbs up as we were going the opposite way. I have a car behind us who looks like he's getting a little impatient, so I've gone ahead and bump it up to 35 miles an hour. And we'll watch as we go into the turn. This one is not as sharp a turn. The car slows down to 30. Ah, it's drifting a little. Yeah, I did not have to take over though. I wonder if the person behind me thinks I'm a student driver based on the car's uncertain body language as it's driving itself. And drops down to 30 for the turn. Yeah, I mean, it's a little maybe jittery in the lane, but it's functional. I mean, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. It's staying within the lane. Um, it's not drifting on either side. It's actually staying pretty centered. The, um, the motion could be a little bit smoother. But... Yeah, it's doing its job. All right, I'll take back over so I can turn go right this light, or this stop sign, I should say. Jeez, that was a dumb move on the car behind me. And I'll turn the, uh, let's turn the autopilot back on, and we'll just go around the bend up here before we go ahead and head back. So it's 35 miles an hour through here. I'm going to put it up to 40. <laughs> yeah, crests of hills is one of the things where I get a little bit worried on it sometimes. Because it doesn't necessarily have a clear line of sight to the lane lines that you'll be approaching. It's doing a good job. And it's slowing down for the turn. It's not coming anywhere close to the curb. And it's not hugging the center line either, which is great. Yeah, it's doing such a good job of staying in the middle for the most part. That was one of the things in the previous version, 17, 17, 17, I'm taking over because I haven't have to turn around here and deal with the stop sign. With the previous version, um, it was a concern when the car was, even though it was successfully staying within its lane, it would drift uncomfortably close to one side or the other, which always gave me a little bit of concern. Obviously with autopilot, the expectation is the driver needs to be able to take over at a moment's notice if the autopilot does anything wrong. But if the autopilot is drifting too close to the edge of a lane, particularly in traffic, uh, the amount of reaction time that you might have to take over in the event that the autopilot does something that potentially puts the car in danger might not be sufficient and that's always been sort of a, a little bit of a concern but now it's um, yeah it's doing a great job so I haven't had the opportunity to test and see if any of the other somewhat less documented changes have um, or less documented features have been changed so I haven't tested to see if it will pick up motorcycles or trucks as separate icons like the old autopilot one cars did um, my guess is no um, none of the other things that that I'm keeping track of that are, are sort of undocumented features have changed yet so no speed limit signs um, no adjacent lanes showing up no lane change on local roads. Um, I'd be surprised if they actually got the um, the icons different in this particular version. And I'll hang left back onto my main street here. Take it a little slowly so the monitor arm doesn't swing out of position the way that it did last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get up to 18 so I can turn on the tack. Generally speaking, when I engage the autopilot, I turn on the tack first because that seems to make it a little bit easier for autopilot to kick in and now engaged at 30 miles an hour I'll adjust you can see it's 
staying centered in its lane. It's reading the lane is narrower than it did in the previous version. Some adjustment in probably how it interprets the lane information. And overcorrects a smidge into the suicide lane. It's weird. This is actually one of the only roads I've seen problems with that on. Um, so one thing that I have not seen it do is I've not seen it overcorrect into the center lane on local roads. It's just on this little street. And that's one of the reasons I like to test on this street is because it is a, a series of relatively sharp turns. It's a pretty curvy little road by my house. Um, so I like to give it a little bit of a challenge. But yeah, so far, I'm um, very, very happy with the new version. I did have the opportunity to test out the perpendicular parking as well. Uh, it seems to only work when there are cars around, just like the parallel parking, because it needs those cars to be able to detect off of for the ultrasonic sensors. Um, but yeah, so far, I'm um, very happy with the new version, the 172676. And I'll post more videos as I have more information. Thanks, everybody.